Hi everyone, I am here with another true story. This one is um, from the same book, of course. We're not done with it yet. We're going to try to get through this. Um, a lot of it this week. In the next week. I might get through all of it this week. I'm not... Jesus talked to me today. True stories of childhood encounters with angels, miracles, and God. This book is by James Stuart Bell, and it's a guidepost book. And this story is, I love these stories by the kids. This one's all about kids seeing stuff and, you know, religious stuff. You'll see. This one is by Tracy Dell Ackermine, and it is called Life is Like a Ball of Yarn. We entered the hospital room to see my brother David, who had been admitted for bowel complications or were they drug-related complications? David had been using drugs for nearly 40 years. Sometimes he was off the drugs, sometimes on, but his life never seemed to be healed in an upward direction for very long. Both of our girls had seen Uncle David in many stages of his addiction, from clean and sober to homeless on the streets. Our oldest daughter, Hannah, always seemed to have his number from the first time she met him. As a little girl of three, she spoke truth into his life. Uncle David, why do you do drugs? Don't you know they will hurt you? Don't you know when you do drugs, Mommy and Nana cry? How could you? I, I couldn't. I couldn't. That would break my heart and, like, make me change. That's sad. She was relentless in her questioning, three years old. The first day she met him, this continued as she grew up, and she remained, addic she remained addicted. I remember her once asking me about the drubs. Mommy, why does Uncle David do drubs? I don't know, honey, I said. Are they like his God, she asked. If that's what he loves the most, that is his God. And if he's addicted to drugs like that, the drugs are his God. That's because that's what he loves the most. You're supposed to put God first and love God the most. He loves the drugs the most. That's his God. Are they like his God, she asked. Yes, honey, I think to him they are. But mommy, we know there is only one true God, she said. She's only three. Three. She's smart. I'm bringing this little girl up right. Yes, honey, we do. Her understanding was simply amazing at such an early age. That's what I was just saying. On this particular day, when we visited Uncle David, Hannah seemed different. Not preoccupied, just introspective, I suppose. Uncle David lay in his hospital bed. My husband, my younger daughter, Nana, and I were at his bedside. Hannah was off to the side, tucked away in the corner. David chattered as usual, blaming the world for his problems, attacking the hospital staff for their inattentiveness and lack of food options. Then the conversation shifted. David started to tell us of a dream he'd had the night before. He dreamed of a cat playing with a ball of yarn. The cat kept batting it around and around. It rolled farther and farther across the floor until it pushed behind a door. Funny, he said, and he described distinctively seeing the cat's paws from the other side of the door poking and prodding, trying to bat at the yarn ball unsuccessfully from under the door, the closed door. What does it mean? He asked. When we didn't respond, he kept saying, what does it mean? Each time louder than before. This is when I noticed that Hannah seemed uncomfortable. She looked perplexed and fidgety. When my eyes met Hannah's, she motioned for me to meet her in the hall. Mommy, I think I know what that dream means, she said. I think God just spoke to me about the meaning of the dream. Really, honey? God spoke to you, I asked, trusting that he, in fact, had spoken. 
because this word not be a first time encounter with God for her. Remember, she's only three. Let's go tell Uncle David, I said. No, he may get mad at me. Hannah, if God gave you a word to share, it's your responsibility to share it, I replied. Hannah understood that any time God spoke to her heart, he may have a specific mission or task for her to fulfill, and this was an opportunity to be used by him. Reluctantly, Hannah followed me back into the hospital room. David's chattering was irritating. David, I interrupted as he talked right over me. David, Hannah knows what your dream means. Finally, there was a temporary silence. What, he asked. Hannah, tell Uncle David what God said the dream means. Sheepishly, Hannah began. Uncle David, you are the cat, she said. Her voice began to get a bit louder, but her eyes began to fill with tears. Can't get over this since she's only three. The ball of yarn is your life. God is trying to tell you that you have been playing around with your life like it is a toy. God is trying to tell you that at any time he can take it from you and it will be out of your reach. He's trying to tell you to get your life right with him and get it on the right path before it's too late. David tried to sit up. He began to cry at the words of his 10 year old niece. Oh, she's 10. Still young. We all were astonished that she could be so articulate and direct. Within seconds, there was not a dry eye in the room. The Lord's presence was so imminent. We all felt the Holy Spirit and were moved to tears. David agreed with her. I know, Hannah, you're right, he said. I have to get my life together with the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. We all learned a lesson that day. We all were reminded that God is at work all of the time and that he uses whomever he wants, whenever he wants. He used our little girl in an amazing way that afternoon. We were removed by her words and hope that this would be a new beginning for Uncle David. And I hope it was, don't you? Sure hope it was.